Okay, Tuesday afternoon. Pretty cloudy out there right now. I saw a streak of lightning a few minutes ago and I thought, well, I better wait a couple minutes before I start a video because it, the sky was getting very dark. And I said, it could just be coming up a storm. But so far, I don't see any raindrops on my window and the sky's getting a little bit lighter, so. I think I'm safe in going ahead and talking to you. Now, this is just one of, one of those little afternoons. You got nothing better to do. So we'll just sit and chit chat. I'll start with yesterday. Went out yesterday, went to Lexington Cemetery and said, now I'm going to do a really good video. I was just talking away showing the water fountain, the ducks and everything it was going very well. When I got ready to click the button to turn off my iPad, I touched something I wasn't supposed to touch. And it put my video on fast speed, which meant my entire video finished in 32 seconds. Now I did that once before about a year or so ago. Didn't know how to fix it then. Don't know how to fix it now. Working on it. Hopefully I can get that video back. But if I don't, it means I gotta go back to Lexington Cemetery, start all over again. No big deal. I don't have anything better to do anyway. And I may say, see something exciting like I did the last time I went out there, I saw this big red Corvette, prettiest thing I ever saw in my life. And I thought if I could just sit in the driver's seat of that car just for two minutes. Well, of course, I wasn't going to get to do that. All I could do was glare and let my tongue hang out, showing how envious I was of whoever the owner was. That was the last time I went to Lexington Cemetery. Didn't get to finish that video either. Now I'm gonna try it one more time. And if it doesn't work the third time, you just don't have to go on the internet and look up Lexington Cemetery because it's a famous cemetery. And some people you may know are buried in that cemetery. Well, for instance, Adolf Rupp is out there, but I didn't look for his grave. He's probably in one of those mausoleums. So much for Lexington Cemetery. Okay, I'm on my way back home. I'm getting pretty hungry, but I think I'll stop at Goodwill on the way. I'm going right by there, almost. Well, so it was half a mile away. That's not so far. So I went in, I started looking around, and lately they just haven't had much to offer. And besides that, Jan and I both have decided we've got to downsize. We've got too much stuff. I want to get rid of some stuff. And of course, you don't know what you're going to get rid of because you think you can't part with any of it. But I'm walking through and said, if I'm lucky, I won't find anything that's irresistible. Well, the first thing I looked at, I'll show you what was. And most of you will recognize this. Take a look. Well, I thought sure. I thought sure I had Astoria American. And even if I didn't, it looked like Bastoria, and the price was right. That's the important thing. The price was right. And I don't have this piece. So, a little earlier, I got my book out. Where is it? Here it is. Some kind person, when I first started my YouTube channel, person sent me this book. Still don't know who sent it. But I still want to say thank you. want everybody to know how nice it was. So I 
opened up the book and I'll tell you the first page I turned to, what did I find? See if I've got it on the right. See, there it is up in the corner. That little blue one. Only mine's clear. Got to looking at it. No, it's not Foster American, but it's Whitehall. A lot of people get Whitehall pieces confused with Astoria American, and I'm one of them. But I like the dish. I don't have one like it. So I'll just keep it. It's not going to hurt anything. And if I don't tell you it's Whitehall, you won't know either. Probably, unless you're well read on Fastoria. So I've got quite a, st a haul of Fastoria and I've got to get rid of some of it eventually. Okay, I'm going through Goodwill. I find one or two little items, dollar, one of them 99 cents, the other was 2.99 and I always go by the shelves where the books are. It's awfully hard to look at one shelf after another of books when you aren't looking for anything special. You're just thinking, oh, I hope I find something special. Well, I ended up with three books, 99 cents each. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. I'll go with the least last. Least first. This one is called... The reason I bought it was I looked at the label on the front of the book and it says... Gooseberry Patch. Well, not too many people are familiar with gooseberries, but I am. And I always mention them when I talk about the things that grew around the house where I grew up. And one of those things was gooseberries. And my mother used to make gooseberry jelly. Well, wouldn't you be attracted to a book that said the gooseberry patch? This is it. Family favorite recipes. Well, that looks good so far. So... I opened up the book and it lots of pretty pictures. Well, of course, it's got fried chicken. What would a cookbook be without fried chicken? Well, let's see if I can find a page or two that might get your attention. Oh, everybody loves berry pies. See that? Actually, as I leaf through the book, it looked quite interesting. I want to get over to the desserts and see what they look like. Oh my. Oh my gosh. This looks like, well, let's see what it says. Rocky Road Peanut Butter Candy Cups. Now who could resist that? So if you'll make them for me, I'll eat them. Look at that. Now you know you couldn't resist one of those. And I hope they're not the little mini, mini cups because I could eat more than one. Uh, let's see what else. This is just give you an example of, of uh, what's in here. Oh, and look at this. Here's what you call a little gift box. This is an interesting thing for, for the ladies. You really should keep these things in mind because you never know when something special comes up, a special person comes along and you think, I want to give them a nice gift. Take a look, isn't that nice? It's a little wooden box and it's full of goodies. I'm gonna see if there's another one like that in here. Because I like things like that. I had cookies sent to me once by a long-lost cousin in Phoenix, Arizona. I had sent her husband 
some genealogy material. The next thing you know, I get a package in the mail and it's shaped like a house. It's a, a box, look like a little house. You open it up and it's got a cloth napkin, or I should say it's more like a little towel inside and roll. I think there were seven different kinds of cookies and they were big cookies too inside that box. I'd never received anything like that in my life. They were delicious. They were wonderful. And I thought, what I sent her was a stack of copies of family history. That was no problem for me. But look what she sent back to me. Those cookies, and I had to be careful because I could have sat down and eaten every cookie in one setting. And I really didn't want to do that. But I love the box so much, I kept it all a long time. And in fact, I just now happen to remember it. Now, here's something that I find interesting. And I wish I would do things like this, but I'm not in the makings. You see this? This is a soup mix. It's a wonderful thing to give as a small favor to someone that has done something nice for you or someone who's sort of down and out and needs a lift. And you just give them this and all they have to do is put it in the pot, add the water and what have you. And they've got a nice pot of soup. I think that's an excellent gift to give a person. Oh, they've even got one that's a waffle mix. Oh my gosh. Brownies baked in a jar. Take a look at this. Oh, excuse me. Look at that. Now, don't tell me you couldn't eat that. It wouldn't take me long. Anything chocolate. If there's in, it's like, how could there be anybody that doesn't like chocolate? But haven't you known someone who said they didn't like ice cream? I thought you were born liking ice cream. Every kid had to like ice cream, but I can't remember who it was. They said they didn't like ice cream. I thought something wrong with him. So that's as far as I'm going to go in that cookbook. 99 cents. You'll have to admit I got my money's worth. Let me tell you how much it, this book cost originally. twenty nine ninety five. Yeah, that was a bargain today. The next book is... And I know you're loving this. But I'm loving it because I've got all kinds of cookbooks and they've been sitting in there for the last two or three years. I haven't even looked at them until yesterday. But if you don't like to read, now this is for the women mainly. If you don't like to read novels, you'll definitely like reading a cookbook. Take a look at this one. Appetizers, dinner, and dessert. That's what this is. And it's got the spiral. It's got these sections sectioned off. And I started through here. And I'm telling you, cooking with three ingredients. That's my kind of cooking. Poultry Plus, yes, eat a lot of chicken, grilled and baked from the sea. No, I'm not much for that kind of fish. I'm more of a catfish type person. 
I grew up, you know, where we had ponds around in the neighborhood and the men would go and they'd fish for a few hours and come home with three or four catfish. Mama would, Mama would fry that catfish. Oh gosh, it was so good. Now I was just a kid. Mama was always afraid of the bones, getting bones stuck in your throat. Now, people don't worry about that anymore and the methods of preparing fish is different now. But my mother would fry that fish. She used meal for the coating and she would pinch it off with her fingers and squeeze it a little bit to see if there were any little bones in it. And then she'd put it in my mouth like I was a baby. That's the worst thing in the world you can do to a good piece of catfish. And I felt like somebody had already chewed it before I got it. But that was the protection your mother gave you when you were a kid when it came to eating river fish. She wanted to make sure there were no bones in it. That's just a little something I threw in just for your benefit. And the first recipe I looked at was chicken with herbs stuffing. I'm going to show the picture because they'd beaten the chicken uh, breast out flat and then they put the stuffing in it and rolled it up and they baked it and then sliced it. Now you have to admit that looked like something would be really nice to serve for a luncheon. And I don't remember what the ingredients are, but it doesn't really matter right now. Naturally, there's garlic and herbs. Um, goat cheese. They use goat cheese. I don't know if I would use goat cheese or not, but I probably use another kind. Anyway, I wanted you to see this book. It's about as close to um, Better Homes and Garden, the Red Checkered Book. It's about as close as you can get. And leafing through, I thought, you know, I think I really would use this cookbook. I think I would pick several things here that I would be willing to fix. And if I do, I'll be making them for you, as well as me. We'll be experimenting together. My third book, you probably wouldn't pay any attention to this book, but it caught my eye immediately. Here's what it is. How to say it. Haven't you often had a situation where you, you needed to say something or you were going to have to do a presentation or even just a little speech or introduce somebody or something and you needed to know just how to say it. You wanted to do it properly for the situation. Now I have had, there are a lot of situations. You take for instance, now this is a thick book and it, you can imagine the ideas and what they tell you. Sometimes they just give you a list of uh, words, words to use that sort of make an impression. Hear my fire truck going by. Yeah, you don't want to watch me without my fire trucks. Okay, let's go on now. You've had to describe something you need just the right word. Now, I'm, I don't have a big vocabulary. I can't come up with these fancy words or words I can't even pronounce. I'm just plain, ordinary, down-home talker. But once in a while, a situation arises, and I've got to write 
a note or I've got to make a phone call and I need to know exactly what to say because it's a special situation. This is the book I discovered. I said, oh my goodness, I can just start searching in the index. I did just that this afternoon. I said, I need to give an example of what I'm talking about. So I got to thinking, now what would be a good one? Oh, you've just had a death in the family or someone else has had a death in the family. You have, let's say you've received a beautiful arrangement of flowers or maybe they brought a, a pineapple mandarin orange cake to the house for the family. Somebody went to a lot of trouble to make that cake. You want to express your appreciation or what this person has done. Now I'm gonna give you an example that I'm familiar with. When you want to send a thank you note to people or a person who has sent a donation, a special gift or something to the family of the deceased, how do you thank this person or these people for being so kind? What exactly do you say? Well, something like that happened when my dad died. Everybody in the office learned that my father had died of cancer. And I was going to be going home. And they got together they took up a donation. <clears throat> they gave it to me in an envelope. And they knew that this hard to tell. <clears throat> they knew my dad had built the church where he taught Sunday school lessons. He hadn't missed a Sunday in 15 years. They wanted to contribute money to the church he built. They gave it to me in an envelope. And I took it and gave it to the, whoever was responsible for that sort of thing at the little church. Well, how do you thank your co-workers for such an excellent contribution? It was my sister in Tennessee that did this. And I wouldn't have expected it from her. I don't know why. Small town girl. Small town raising, you know. Not the intellectual type. She sent a thank you note to the office and it got passed around through my co-workers. And when one of them read the, the uh, thank you note, <clears throat> she came to me and she said, Pat, wait a minute now. That's the most <clears throat> beautiful Thank you note I have ever read. I never forgot that. My sister wrote it. I don't know if I ever told her what this person said, but I knew if she thought it, the other coworkers in my office thought it too. The most beautiful thank you note she had ever read. That's what you're looking for when you get a book like this. How to say it. She knew how to say it. She said it beautifully. I'll give you another example. Resumes. Resumes in here. Whatever the subject, it's in here. 
Now, we've all had to write a resume, present a resume. It's hard to do, especially if you haven't had very much work experience that's impressive. So I was secretary to this man and he was getting ready to hire another secretary in the office. And when the resumes came in, he gave them to me to file. He would go through them and decide which person he was going to hire. I read those resumes and I read the description of their work experience. And when I got through, I knew exactly which girl he was going to hire because of what she said on her resume, how she described her skills and her work experience. Now that tells you how important it is to say the right thing, give the right description on a resume. That's how important it is if you want to get the job. Now, those are just two little examples I'm giving you because I bought this book for 99 cents. Now, when I'm trying to tell a story and I need a phrase or a catchy comment to really hit the spot, this is the book I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to the index and I'm going down until I find something that says the right thing. That's what I'm looking for. And in this case, when I was told about my dad, I was looking for uh, thank you notes for the deceased. And it had a whole list of things that you could say. And you could not fail to uh, pick one out. You could, you could find the word you wanted. If the word was impressive, you would find it once you described what you wanted. So I thought this was interesting and I'm going to be making use of this book. I don't know what it costs. I'm going to see if it's got a price in it. No, don't. Maybe it's on the back. Oh, let me put my glasses on. I got my blue glasses. Something to wear with my blue glasses. This book listed for eight no sixteen dollars i'm surprised i would have thought it would have been more than that choice words phrases sentences and paragraphs for every situation you'll have to admit that's a good book and i hope whoever wrote it got a lot of money out of it because I'm thinking it'll be worth it. Now, I forgot to tell you that when I stopped at Goodwill, if there's one thing I don't need, it's pullover tops. Well, you haven't seen this one before. It's a sort of a dull blue. And I don't have anything in blue. And I saw it, checked the tags. It was obvious to me Nobody had ever worn this shirt, brand new. So, I don't know if you can see. Well, you can see the little flowers that are embroidered uh, around here and there. And it fits nice. But when I sat down here, got ready to do my video, I looked at myself in the screen. And guess what I saw? Let me show you. Right on the sleeve was this 
Well, shoot, I'm not getting it up there right. I'll get it up here where you can see it. Hanging on my blouse was this, with this little color blue. I don't know if blue was the half price day or not. But I thought, oh my goodness, I could see me walking out the front door with this hanging on my blouse and someone would surely say, ma'am, you forgot to take the tag off the blouse. You've had that happen, especially if it's on the back of your sleeve where you can't see it. So that's what was on my blouse when I sat down here to do my video. Now I'm trying to think if there's anything real important you need to know. Uh, I've been reading a few others comments and pretty interesting people. Yes, and some of them have been calling my name and I have to say it. I don't want to be talking like this all the time, but I am so pleased with the response you view, my viewers have given to Billy Jean's YouTube channel. He is a good cook. I know that. He's had training as a chef. He is an intelligent person and there are so many things he can talk about. I'm hoping you can prompt him to tell you a few of the few stories. But I've been watching him perform in the kitchen. He's very neat, very precise about everything he does. And there's no doubt that if he prepares a meal for you, you're going to like it. So on behalf of Billy Jean, I'm going to say thank you because he needs subscribers. He needs to build up his list. And I've been on here two and a half years now. And I just went over the 36,000 mark. You know how that feels. I didn't know that many people could possibly be interested in my chit chat. What can I say to that? Maybe I need to get my book out that says how to say it. I'm going to look it up so I can tell you. Thank you. I'll be with you later, and I'm hoping that the sky clears up. I have a feeling that Dan over in Sadieville on Sadieville Ridge or whatever it's called, she's way up on a high ridge. So they get the bad weather first. So I'm gonna call her and see if, if the uh, storm maybe bypassed her. She's been awfully busy with Charlie working on their wildflower garden and they're planting vegetables She's going to be a farmer's wife. My Jan is going to be the Lady Deer. D-E-E-R, Lady Deer. Charlie Deer and Lady Deer. Isn't that cute? Oh, she's going to love me for saying that. Take care, everybody, and do good things for others. And I... I ate the second meal of my uh, French toast. I used um, sourdough bread this time. Sourdough bread, Texas toast, and Italian bread. They're thick bread, and they work better than the thin bread. The thin bread, let's see. If I can say my words right, 
the thin bread falls apart easier. So I used the sourdough bread today. I think it tasted better this time than it did yesterday. So anyway, I'm going to get off, give you a rest, and you let me know what you think. Oh, and I was going to say, I put on my blue earrings, never had anything to, to wear them with, and these are beautiful earrings. Let me take one off and show you real close how pretty it is. Isn't that beautiful? So I finally got something I can wear my blue earrings with. Now, this, I made this. I'm not showing it to you because I think it's pretty. I'm showing it to you because it's blue. And I can wear it with, and you know what this is? This is a prism. I said, oh, why not? Let's try a necklace using a prism. So here's what you got. Well, I could stand up. Maybe that would show it better. But I just want this to lay against my blouse so that you can see the prism. And see it. Anyway, I don't usually wear this because I don't really like it. But it's blue. So that's all, folks. I wish I could do the rest the way Daffy Duck, no, Bugs Bunny, you know who he was, see you later.